I teach yoga more than anything just to to help people. <laughs> it's funny that sounds so, <laughs> but but it's true. I I, I definitely I, I teach yoga because I want to see people get better, and that's really how I came to being a teacher. I started practicing yoga in my 30s after you know breaking three vertebrae in my back. It was really I came to it from a place of healing, and then what started happening is. Uh, friends and family, just different buddies that were, you know, we're all getting older, we're in our 30s, and we're always complaining of back pain. And before I knew it, I'd be like, oh, I saw this really cool thing in class, and I'd have them on the ground and doing a few stretches just to help them relieve their back pain. And I find myself doing that more and more. Also, became <laughs> I was at the studio, you know, at least three days a week and really got to know the people. And, you know, before you know it, you're helping with other students and stuff like that. I mean, after having been asked, you know, and assisting with teachers and things, and, and they really pushed me into trying to teach, which was such a far cry um, from what I'd been doing previously. I was a producer for a film company um, for quite some time, um, which was the exact opposite <laughs> of what I was doing. So it was um, it was a big shift, and I think really the the shift that I needed, and just to see people having come from that place of recovery myself, seeing people get better and improve their quality of life is just the most rewarding thing I could do. As I've mentioned before, this is, you know, the famous Steven story, I broke my back. That's why I started teaching yoga. It was, uh, I broke T7, T8, and T9 when I was snowboarding. I think I'd become complacent after riding for so many years and went a little too big off a jump too early in the season. But after a lengthy bed rest and walking with a cane and having to wear this like turtle shell brace that held my spine up, my physical therapist has suggested that I start yoga. And I think I've probably said this before too, but my response was not not a very enlightened one. I think it was yoga's for girls, I'm not interested. But uh, she bullied me into it, God bless her. Um, and I started, I just started nice and slow. I mean, it took me a minute, I didn't, you know, the problem with people saying do yoga is there's so many styles of yoga. But I, you know, I bounced around a little bit and found a gym that kind of resonated with me. It was a slow process. I mean, I could hardly reach past my knees. So it's not just the injury, but also my mindset. I used to show up to class like 10 minutes late so I didn't have to do the opening meditation and I would roll up my mat quietly and sneak out for Shavasana because I was there to make my body better. I wasn't there to meditate with the hippies, or, which, you know, <laughs> the pot calling the kettle black at this point. But, but it was, I came into it through a more physical style. I mean, once I kind of gained some of my movement and strength back, I really gravitated towards vinyasa. And the reason why is it was that what I needed, you know, I grew up doing athletic things and so for me, it was such a natural transition to do a more fast-paced kind of strength and endurance style of yoga. And it wasn't until much later uh, that I found the softness and some complementary practices. Yeah, I came to yoga through injury, and I think that that's why I enjoy teaching. I've had so many different breaks and strains and pulls and in my body that it really, to see the difference it made in my quality of life, I just wanted to share that with other people. The biggest changes I've seen in my students, that's a big question, because I've seen about everything. I've seen, and it's just largely because I teach such different styles of yoga. The difference between vinyasa and chair yoga and restorative yoga are just, it's a completely different student that you're working with. You know, chair yoga, I've had probably some of the most rewarding experiences. I've had people in their 80s and 90s, they're like, I can tie my own shoes again. Or one lady gave me a big hug and said, I can use the shelf above my stove again. I put my spices up there now which may sound little, but at that later stage of life to gain that kind of quality of life back is a really big deal. Um, and it's just, you know, introducing movement back into people's body. And it's super rewarding. You know, I've also worked with people in that age bracket that had it's pretty severe scoliosis. And just to be able to, you know, see these habitual patterns that they hold in their body and, and help them bring some alignment back, like it happens, it can happen. And, you know, do I, can you cure it? No, but you can incur, or improve the quality of life so dramatically for people. You know, and then restorative yoga, uh, not only is it great, just like passive stretching in general, it's just so good for your body, but watching people have emotional breakthroughs. And that one was a big one for me. I didn't expect to have one. I know like it, you know, I'd heard teachers talk about, you know, hip openers are <laughs> really good for releasing emotions. And I just, that was not my jam when I started yoga and I just sounded like flowery woo-woo talk to me. So. Um, and then sure enough, I was in a restorative yoga class and I, it had been a rough year without getting into my personal life, but, and I just openly wept. And I come from the eighties where boys don't cry. You know, yoga's helped me find that more tender side, but openly weeping in a room full of strangers was um, so far outside my comfort zone. 
So I've seen that happen for a lot of other people, which is one of the reasons I love that style is to see people become vulnerable and let things out. It's, it's amazing to be able to facilitate that. And then, you know, so coming into like the more physical side of yoga, you know, the vinyasa practice. I think what I've seen most for that is like the, the confidence that people gain. People who are recovering from injury, maybe never had an athletic background. Maybe they do have some sort of trauma in their life, but to, that power and strength they can get from learning to know their own body and be present and aware. And it's an amazing process to see the confidence that that practice can build in someone outside the physical changes, you know, like it is gonna bring so many, you know, physical attributes into the practice, but more than anything, just to see people gain that confidence and just how that changes someone both inside and out. And you can just see it in the way that they carry themselves. And also to see people do things they never thought they could. I can't tell you how many times I've shown a student, you know, if we start getting to some more of the advanced practice, we're doing inversions and stuff, and they're like, yeah, right. And sure enough, someone who's never practiced yoga in their 40s can suddenly do things they've never been able to do or accomplish in their life. So every style has its benefits, and I think that that's, you know, why I teach yoga and what I enjoy seeing those, you know, changes for my students. Really, I Put, taking the kinks out of my body. I think I walked like an old bull rider by the time I was 30s. Like I'd had so many like broken my collarbone and let it heal out of place because I was a dumb kid who didn't do my physical therapy and a couple tears in my ACL and breaking my ankle and elbow and wrist and so many things. And I was really, I was taking a leave every day. Yeah, I was a hot mess, you know? <laughs> and I think that that's one of those things I had to, something so big had to happen to shake me up. And I think when the universe whispers, you should listen so it doesn't have to shout. And yoga was a big one for me, breaking my back and then having to come back from that. But what it allowed me to do is address all the things I just ignored. Like I used to not be able to run or jog because my knees, my ankles were so bad from just years of abuse of skateboarding and snowboarding and motorcycles and all that fun stuff. But yoga gave me my life back. And I know that sounds like an oversell, but I was just, I was in such pain. And then also realizing that the way that I had always exercised or found fitness just wasn't appropriate i'm short and stocky i have no business having a six-pack and i fought that through my whole life i was on the wrestling team i was on the hockey team and i really had this perception of how i should look and how i should weigh beat my body accordingly you know i would get up and run five miles and do crazy weight training and things like that that's part of what happened to my body is just pushing it so hard all the time and through yoga i really found that the self-acceptance and being more in tune with my body and realizing like the strength, the stamina, the balance, like all these things I always crave to like step up kind of sports performance, I gained through stepping back and tuning in even more deeply to my body, which I really thought as an athlete I already had, but it's amazing when you can get these really deeper level of awareness of your body, you know, and that internal and external working together, like that for me is probably the best part of yoga. My favorite styles of yoga are the three that I teach, you know, funny how that works. I've gravitated to the things that I like, you know, I, I will take other people's practices and I do enjoy, you know, different teachers approaches to different styles. But for me, I love the active part of vinyasa. Um, I love the creative freedom of vinyasa. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to adhere to any lineage. As long as you're working in a safe, effective manner and being really conscientious of your posture and your alignment, there's no rules, you know, just moving through the postures is, I, I love it. I like building that, you know, I feel like I've always been strong with the level of stamina that yoga gives you because it just, it's so challenging. And then when you're in that moment of being challenged, also try to find stillness, master your breath, master your mind while you're pushing your body is amazing. And I do say pushing your body, but I don't mean in a way that's going to cause injury. And that's what's nice about yoga is, you know, we're not, no pain, no gain. We're actually, it's by not working harder, you know, not pushing yourself deeper into the postures, you're actually able to challenge yourself more so you can bring about that challenge without, you know, risk, uh, risking physical injury. I absolutely adore vinyasa. It is by far my favorite practice. I am primarily a vinyasa teacher. That being said, restorative yoga. I came to restorative yoga kind of two, three years into my practice. And the first time I did, I just sat on the schedule at the studio and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll try restorative yoga. Um, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I walked out of there. I'm like, oh my God, I just paid 
$25 to lay in a dark room with strangers and breathe. Like, what was that? Like I said, yoga came to me slowly. But what I found with restorative yoga is that, you know, when I tried it again, it was probably almost a year later when I tried it again. And it, my response that time was like, where has this been my whole life? And I feel like it's one of those things, you know, the, the student has to be ready for the lesson. Otherwise, what's the point? And I'd finally come to a spot where I, I was better, you know, I'd started getting into pranayama, the breath work. I'd started getting into the meditation and I just got better at being still. And when you can find that stillness, that's where the magic happens. That's where you can, you know, the, pa the passive stretching, you know, being able to let go of that, you know, tension, tightness, pain, and all the different, you know, I don't know, it's a different level of mastery and probably the hardest class we teach. Like it's, it should be easy, right? You lay on a bunch of pillows and blankets and, um, but it really is, there's a, there's a different level of mastery because people are good at moving. People are not good at being still. And lastly, chair yoga, I adore chair yoga too. It's like, again, I, I teach what I like. Um, I like that. I like who I work with in chair yoga because um, it usually is people coming um, from a place of injury, but not always. You know, sometimes, you know, there, there are physical restrictions and it's just, you know, I worked with a gentleman who was a beast of a guy um, who'd blown out his knees playing football his whole life and very physically fit, but getting up and down off the ground was a deal breaker. It was, he flourished in chair yoga. It was amazing because you can really gear the class but also it just it makes it accessible for so many people you know so age physical ability you know there's so many things that happen and for me like i feel like in a more vigorous practice not only do people transition really quickly they would sacrifice the integrity of the posture to get deeper and i feel like what happens is when we introduce a chair and you use that as a prop um, it allows you to really work on fine tuning your alignment so like coming into pyramid and chair and so many things um it's just nice to see people it, it forces them to step back from a more vigorous practice so chair yoga is good for everyone it's good for anyone recovering from an injury it's good for people who are a bit older it's good for people who may be pregnant um it's good for you know people who just want to slow down and take postures deeper differently <laughs> I know yoga is good for people. It really is. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I think when yoga isn't good is when people try to do aerobics and use yoga names where they're just clicking through postures. Like that's not a yoga class. <laughs> so much of the practice is internal, which is why there's so many different styles. You know, it can meet everybody where they're at. It's an important practice for people to bring about that deeper level of awareness into their body. So much healing happens. And then just that, that strength, that confidence that people gain from improving their body. And then just like, you know, as for me, like I can, I can run again. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. You know, like my knees, my ankles were so bad. It's amazing what yoga has done as far as giving my life back. So yoga, you know, it's, it's the slow nature of the practice that makes it so powerful. It's not something like Tai Bo or Zumba or something, you know, and if that's your jam, do it. But coming in and just trying to you don't jump into the practice you, you have to take it slow it makes you slow down and if you can do that it that's that's why it works because it is a slow process and constant analyzing your body and your movement and connecting the the mind and the breath to that it's a really powerful tool for me it's like taking my bike out and going to the river by our house and just riding up, you know, five miles each way and coming back, you know, and just being out in nature and being physically active. For me, that's self-care. That's when I get into those states of flow. For me, I guess self-care is largely shutting down my mind. Um, and when I'm, you know, biking and in nature, and I feel the same way about like snowboarding and like I get through physical activity, my I actually find mental rest, um, which I think for me is the biggest self-care. And again, why I like yoga, you know, the first time I actually really got into a vinyasa flow and I saw how I was able to get into that higher level. Like, I feel like, you know, when I got done with the practice, it was when I was like almost coming back to my own consciousness. And I feel like I'd only ever experienced that through snowboarding when I'm just like charging a hill and everything's muscle memory and go, go, go. And I, you know, getting into those really great states of flow. And uh, yoga was the first time that it wasn't a really high impact physical activity that I actually reached that. And, that's how I do self-care. I keep active and, you know, I'm all about taking time to appreciate mountain air and a nice cup of tea and slowing down. But, um, but to get that really deep level of self-care, I'm going to need to be charging down a hill. <laughs>